Welcome to the 10 plus 1 more lesser known features, tips and tricks about Coda. This time I don't say the ones you didn't know, because today's roundup will probably have more familiar features to you. I kinda used all the wow ones in the pilot episode and I want to keep some upon my sleeve. That said, maybe some of these will actually be new to you. In the end of this video, please let me know in the comments which ones work. Let's go. Okay, let's start with a simple one. Last time we resized columns horizontally. And while by no means it's a secret knowledge, some people overlook that you can actually resize column headers vertically. If your column names are large, you can drag your column headers here and choose whether you want it to be one line, two lines or three lines high. Three lines is a limit, so if you need more explanations for your columns, just add a column description. Oh, while I was editing this video, this feature became even less secret. They just exposed this setting here in the table settings. Trick number two, and again, not secret knowledge, but it turns out not everyone knows it's possible. Like somebody in the community complained just recently that there wasn't a shortcut to hide all the columns at once. And if they wanted to set up a view from scratch, they had to hide them one by one. No, you can actually do it. Just pick the first column, press shift, scroll, all the way to the end of the table and click on the last one. Release shift, right click, hide columns. And then you go to the table settings and enable just the columns that you want. There is a few more things that you can do with multiple selected columns such as duplicate or delete them in bulk and also wrap and unwrap values. The latter ones will especially be handy in subtables. For some reason when you enable a subtable in Coda, by default all columns are wrapped. So the quickest way to fix this is to again click, shift, click, menu and wrap text to show the complete values. Trick number three is about the people column. Did you know that you can actually reference people who are not on this list, like people not even from your workspace, by copy-pasting them from other docs? This actually came out of a need one of my clients had. They were consulting for different teams and for each team the client would create a bunch of docs where they would add all the people and roles ahead of time, before those docs were even shared with the team. And because of that and the fact that this doc was created in the client's own workspace, these people weren't yet selectable in the doc. So what we did was that we created a separate doc where each team member could check in ahead of time and when everyone did, my client would copy all those people references into their private docs and then ultimately share them with the team when they were ready. So while I agree this is not a super common scenario, this thing is still good to know. Another thing that's good to know but you might have overlooked it is that you are not stuck only with paragraph breaks in your text cells. You can actually make soft line breaks too. The reason why you might have overlooked it is that because in pages you know how this works. To get a paragraph you press enter and to insert a line break without starting a new paragraph you press shift enter. But in a table both work differently. Pressing enter confirms the edit and moves you to the next line and shift enter inserts you a paragraph. And there is no shortcut here to insert a soft line break and that's why you might have thought that adding arbitrary line breaks in tables was just not possible. It is though if you open your text cell in the big text mode by clicking here, which frankly could also be a surprise for you. And in this mode both enter and shift enter work like you'd expect them to. Now with all that new line talk let's move to the formula editor. You probably know by now or you've seen me doing it, in the formula editor you can manually format your code. You can press shift enter to break into a new line, you can press tab to add a standard two spaces indent, also you can select a part of your formula code and press tab to increase or shift tab to decrease the indent on all selected lines. Don't know about you but I actually never use auto format. I don't like the formatting style it applies, I have my own best practices, I will tell you all about them in a separate video. And the lesser known feature here is that for all of that to work you don't even have to open the big formula editor. All of these shortcuts apply in the small editor as well. It wasn't always like that and you might have missed the moment when they added it and that's why I decided to include it in this roundup. The next tip is for people who like to name their columns like this, with all sorts of symbols and emojis, and then have trouble locating them when writing their formulas. Sure, you can type this row and narrow code suggestions down to only the columns of this table, but if you have quite a lot of them, that's also gonna be a challenge. So what you can do in this situation is open a square bracket, paste or type in the name of your column as is, and when this bracket turns green, now you will know that this will properly resolve to a column. Tip number 7. You all know basic math operations operators such as plus, minus, divide and multiply. But did you know about this operator? It's not a percentage, it's a modular operator that calculates the remainder of the whole number division. So if we divide 11 people in groups of 3, we have 3 full groups and then 2 people left. 
This operator is very similar to the remainder function, the only difference is in how these two handle negative numbers. Alright, tip number 8. In my last couple videos we talked a lot about at references. Normally to at reference a row either in a formula or in your text, you type the at symbol and start typing the value of the display column of the row that you want to reference. But you don't have to. In case you missed it, you can actually start typing out a portion of any other column. Coda now has full text search for at references and will now suggest you all the rows that have the text that you just typed in any of its columns. Lastly, for tips 9 and 10, let's talk about images and uploads. You know that in columns of those types, you can click the add button and it will open your file explorer so that you can pick your files or pictures to upload. But did you know that you could also just drag your files into these cells? And if you knew that, did you also know that you could just copy and paste files and images into these cells? And they would upload just the same. That's your tip number 9. And the tip number 10 that you might not know about is that those upload columns are not the only place where you can copy paste your images, in tables I mean. You can also copy paste them into your regular text cells. Now I don't really have any smart uses for this, I maybe used this once in my life when I only needed one picture and I already had a big table of HLP templates and for some reason I didn't feel like adding another table or another column for just one upload. After all there is a hacky way to get to that image and reference it like a regular image elsewhere. But nowadays I really discourage you from this. Today I would say there is really no problem in creating a separate table or adding a column to your HLP templates table or if you actually need this image in line with text you'll be better off with a canvas already because that way you'll get all those extra formatting options like multiple columns and you will probably want them. So the only reason I mentioned this capability here in this roundup is because I would certainly not be doing a separate episode on it nor would I mention it in any other episode and besides it fit well with the previous tip. And finally tip number 11 that comes with a bonus is the fact that not only you can display uploaded images but you can manipulate them directly in Coda. You see, when you upload something to Coda, it stores the original files on its own servers. You can identify them by their links, which start with codahosted.io. However, Coda doesn't serve you these images directly. It uses a service called Imgix, which compresses and optimizes these images and serves them to you from one of the servers of their own, whichever is the closest to you geographically. This all is done so that your pictures can load with the minimal detail. And the URLs of these processed images will start with codeio.imgix.net. Now, this is already a good tip to know, because when you are using an uploaded image in your page and you are not happy with the quality, now you would know that you can just rewrite its URL to force Coda to load the image in the original quality. But the cool thing about Imgix is that it's not just a content delivery network. It also offers you a wide range of modifications you can do with your images, such as cropping, resizing, adjusting the brightness and saturation, applying some effects like sepia and recoloring and you can even overlay them with text and other images and basically create compositions that combine images together. Like I could use it to generate thumbnails for my past YouTube videos right from my coda tables without having to pay for the third party service like Banner Bear. And the best part is that to do all of this all you have to do is add the parameters to your Imgix URL. You don't even have to sign up anywhere or upload your files through the API or make a pack for it. All you have to do is just grab the images URL and and add the parameters according to the MJX documentation. Now some parameters only work in pairs and some exclude each other so you have to be accurate. However you don't even have to worry about all of that. A few years ago I actually created a pack for that called edit images pack. The pack hides all the complexity behind those URL parameters and offers a set of convenient and well documented formulas. The only problem with it at the moment is that it doesn't cover all the Imgix parameters. That's because I made this pack in a hurry for a hackathon. But it covers a good half of it. And for the rest, you can always just concatenate those parameters to the URL. Besides, the pack is free and open source and you're welcome not to only use it, but to learn from it. And the last fun fact. While I didn't win the hackathon that time, a year later I won the AI hackathon with my project Storify and Carouselify. And guess what was the crux of the project? Yeah, sure, I'm using code the AI to extract key points from an article, but the final slides generation, the wow part of the project, is completely built upon this Imgix trick and my edit images pack. So check out the description, there is a lot of links both to the pack and to the Storify and Carouselify doc which is free and to the tutorial on the edit images pack, which is yeah, one of those long videos that I used to do before the reboot. Take a look at it, maybe you'd like that style of editing <laughs> or rather lack of editing more. And there is also a link to Patreon 
channel because I'm still in need for your support. Like this weekend my car broke down and it's serious. And there is also that early bird deal going on which is already expiring this week. So hurry up because if you catch it you'll be getting a bundle of nice premium dogs, some of which are only exclusive to this deal. Thank you for watching, give this video a like and subscribe and I see you in the next one. Cheers. I should totally do myself an ending card because <laughs> the reason I'm sitting here and staring into the void is for these links, you know, to have time to appear for, for those 10 seconds.